அனிமல் செல் கழிச்சு தேங்க்யூ ஹாய் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் செஷன் வி ஹவ் சீன் அபவுட் த செல் க்ரோத் அண்ட் செல் வயபிலிட்டி ஆஃப் அனிமல் செல் கல்ச்சர் இன் டுடே செஷன் வி வில் சி அபவுட் அனிமல் செல் கல்ச்சர் மீடியா இன் திஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி த பேசிக் காம்பனன்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அனிமல் செல் கல்ச்சர் மீடியா டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் அனிமல் செல் கல்ச்சர் மீடியா மோஸ்ட் காமன்லி யூஸ்ட் அனிமல் செல் கல்ச்சர் மீடியா அண்ட் த ஆப்டிமைசேஷன் ஆஃப் அனிமல் செல் கல்ச்சர் மீடியா நவ் வி சி அபவுட் அனிமல் செல் கல்ச்சர் மீடியா one of the most important factors in animal cell culture is medium composition in vitro cell growth and maintenance of animal cells require appropriate nutritional hormonal and growth factors that resemble their in vivo environment as close as possible some of the important environmental factors that govern animal cell culture is media substrate temperature oxygen and carbon dioxide pH and molality. In addition, cells require chemical compounds that they cannot synthesize by themselves. Any successful medium is composed of isotonic, low molecular weight organic compounds called as basal media which provides inorganic salts, amino acids, energy source and other chemical requirements. Now, we see about the basic components present in animal cell culture media. Indeed, there are many basic components present in animal cell culture media. They are buffering system, inorganic salt, amino acids, carbohydrates, proteins and peptides, fatty acids and lipids, vitamins, trace elements and antibiotics. Now, we see about buffering systems. Regulating pH is very critical to optimize animal cell culture conditions. In general, this is achieved by two systems. One is natural buffer media, another one is heifer. in natural buffer media gaseous carbon dioxide balances with carbonate and bicarbonate present in the animal cell culture media it needs to be maintained in air atmosphere with 5 to 10 percentage carbon dioxide which is maintained in co2 incubator this natural buffering system is low cost and less toxic hepas has a superior buffering capacity in the range of ph 7.2 to 7.4 it does not need any controlled air atmosphere and relatively this is expensive and bit toxic to certain type of cells in general all media contain phenol red as a ph indicator now we see about inorganic salts these inorganic salts help to retain osmotic balance and also help to regulate membrane potential by providing sodium potassium and calcium ions next is amino acids amino acids as we all know they are the building blocks for proteins so they are obligatory ingredients in many known cell culture media essential amino acids are need to be added in the animal cell culture media as they cannot be synthesized by cells themselves amino acids are very important for cell proliferation for example l glutamate this is a very important essential amino acid now we see about carbohydrates carbohydrates in the form of sugars are the major source of energy most media contain glucose and galactose however some media contain maltose and fructose now we see about proteins and peptides most commonly used proteins and peptides are albumin transferrin and fibronectin these proteins and peptides are very important in serum free media albumin is a major protein present in the blood they bind with water free fatty acids hormones so they help to transfer them within cells and tissues transferrin is a iron transfer protein which helps to transfer iron to the membrane fibronectin is a protein which helps in cell attachment now we see about fatty acids and lipids these fatty acids and lipids are very important in serum free media because they present generally in serum now we see about vitamins vitamins are very important for cell growth and proliferation in general cells cannot synthesize sufficient amount of vitamins so they need to be supplemented in the animal cell culture media for example b vitamins are very helpful for the stimulation of cell growth now we see about trace elements these trace elements are very helpful for the proper growth of cells 
These micronutrients helps in many biological systems. For example, it helps to maintain enzyme functionality. Example for trace elements include zinc, copper and selenium. Now we see about antibiotics. Antibiotics are not essential for the growth of animal cells. However, it helps to control bacterial and fungal contamination in animal cell culture. The most widely used combination of antibiotics is penicillin streptomycin. It is also called as pen strep. Now we see about the types of animal cell culture media. It is generally of two types. One is natural media and the another one is artificial media. Natural media is composed of naturally occurring body fluids that support the growth and proliferation of animal cells and tissues. It is generally of three types. Coagulants or clots, tissue extracts and body fluids. Coagulants or clots. These are the plasma separated from heparinized blood from chicken or any other animals which is commercially available in liquid plasma. Biological fluids include body fluids such as serum, plasma, amniotic fluid and pleural fluids. Then tissue extract. This includes spleen, liver and bone extract. The most widely used tissue extract in animal cell culture media is chicken embryo extract. Now we see about artificial media. It contains partly or fully defined compounds which is prepared artificially by adding several organic or inorganic nutrients. This is actually a balanced salt solution with optimal pH and osmolarity which offers immediate survival of the cells. This artificial media when supplemented with serum or any other organic compounds supports prolonged survival of the cells. This is of four types, serum media, serum free media, chemically defined media and protein free media. Now we see about serum media, its advantages and disadvantages. Serum is a mix of albumin, growth factors and growth inhibitor. Serum is one of the most important constituent in animal cell culture media. It serves as a source for amino acids, proteins, vitamins, particularly fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, K and carbohydrates, amino acids, trace elements, hormones and minerals. The most widely used serum are fetal bovine serum and fetal calf serum. Now we see the advantages of serum media. It helps in cell growth and cell function. It helps in cell attachment. It acts as a binding protein. It also serves as a buffering agent and it minimizes mechanical or viscosity injury or damages to the cells. Now we see the disadvantages of serum media. The composition of serum is not uniform, so it produces batch to batch variation. It has a high risk of microbial contamination. Also, it has a high risk of cell growth inhibition. Also, we have to test the serum to maintain the quality. Then, the presence of serum may interfere with the downstream purification of cell culture products. Now, we see about serum free media. The presence of serum may have many drawbacks and it can also lead to serious misinterpretations in immunological studies. So number of serum free media have been developed. It is defined to support a specific cell type or stem cells. It contains defined quantity of growth factors, lipoprotein and other proteins. It is also referred as defined culture media as we know the composition of this media. Now we see about chemically defined media and protein free media. In chemical defined media, it consists of contamination free, ultra pure, organic and inorganic salts. It may contain protein additives like growth factors. The ingredient of this media is produced in bacteria or yeast via genetic engineering with the addition of vitamins, proteins, lipids and amino acids. Now we see about protein free media. This media do not contain any protein and contain only non-protein ingredients. This supports superior cell growth and protein expression. This medium also facilitates downstream purification of cell culture products. Now we see about the preparation of animal cell culture media. One can manually prepare the animal cell culture media, otherwise it is commercially available in three forms. One is powder form which has to be prepared and articulated. Next one is concentration form which need to be diluted. Third one is working solution which don't need any dilution, we can directly use it without manipulation. The most important thing is the media should be tested for its sterility before doing any cell culture experiments. Now 
we are going to see about the most commonly used animal cell culture media. There are many animal cell culture media used to grow and proliferate animal cells and tissue. The widely used common animal cell culture media include Dalbeco's modified eagle media, RPMI 1640, eagle's minimal essential media, Ham's F12 and DNA F12 combination. Now we see about the optimization of animal cell culture media. The complexity of the composition of the animal cell culture medium provides challenges to optimize individual ingredient in the animal cell culture media. In general, classic media is designed for low density cell cultures with serum as a key nutrient. However, biotechnology industry use serum free media with high concentration of nutrients higher than classic media. The parameters to be considered for the optimization of animal cell culture media is product to be made, cell lines to be used, and manufacturing process involved. We have come to the end of the session. I hope you have all understood about the basic components of animal cell culture media, the types of animal cell culture media, the commonly used animal cell culture media, and the optimization of animal cell culture media. In the next session, we will see about characterization of cell lines in animal cell culture. Thank you.